Thanks, Trividya. Hi. Thanks Hi, for Vishu. joining us on Winning Ways. Hi, Vishu. You are an ed tech company. That's right. For using games as mm-hmm. a primary medium of Correct. imparting learning. Right, right. So, uh, you know, how does this work and how? what has been the response of educators? We started out life as a game company. We didn't start out thinking, oh, we're going to make games for education. We started out life as a games company and we wanted to be, you know, in everybody's pocket and we wanted to engage and entertain people. We weren't thinking about education at all. However, somewhere along that journey, uh, the Ministry of Education in Singapore came to us and said, listen, we want uh, to partner with game companies to see how we can use the methods that you adopt to engage your uh, gamers to see if those same methods can be used in the classroom or outside to enable learning. And so we piloted a lot of projects with with the Ministry of Education, and this is primarily in K-12. And so we actually worked with educators. We worked with MOE to create curriculum to get teachers trained on, on how to use games. So that was the first step. But along that journey, we also realized that teachers actually present every day. They present to their classroom. They engage their children in the content, and therefore they have a lot of design skills. So when we we started working with games for learning and games for education, we actually started enabling all these educators and trainers to start designing, or at least thinking of design uh, of uh, game-like content to deliver to their students. And that's the beginning of our product, uh, which is called 3D Hive. That was the beginning idea of our product. And um, uh, we slowly have enabled a lot of educators. We've actually trained over 5,000 MOE school teachers here in Singapore to create their own games and use those games in the classroom and um, you know see different results. Now, uh, learning in today's context has always mean, meant exam learning, has always meant you do much better in the exams. However, in this new age that we are all entering, exam uh, assessments are not going to be as traditional as remembering. It's not going to be a test of your memory skills. So uh, learning is about applying knowledge. And that's where we see the game changer for education in the future, which is how can you do or do better what you already know? and use that knowledge to do do things better. And that's what we are now focusing on, and educators are also focusing on, which is application of knowledge. Knowledge is, is now abundant. You know, you don't need somebody to go through a library of books to find the knowledge. It's at, you know, at the click of a Google button that you have information. So we are not in an era where memory is important. We are in an era where application of the knowledge is important, and that's where we believe that educators are also moving in. And game-like environments are actually going to assist trainers and educators to actually get this application of knowledge through to their participants and students. So, so you started as a kind of a games, company. games company in that's right. that's right. So now, how have you taken this forward? I mean, in terms of you know going beyond schools and colleges, right. are you getting into the into the corporate uh, area where you know so much of training is there and so Absolutely. much of a focus on you know developing skills is there these days. Right. So at this moment, um, we actually have seen tremendous success, as I said, with K-12. But where we see a crying need, as you rightly pointed out, is in the corporate space. They have, number one, the requirements, because on-the-job training is becoming very critical um, <clears throat> with this um, new generation of uh, work as it is even work styles are changing work skills are important lifelong learning is very important job roles are changing today we have jobs that didn't exist five years ago so it's becoming very very important uh, at your workplace to have new skills and to be able to do your job well so training is becoming and learning is becoming very very important and Corporates are coming regularly to talk to us. In fact, we've, uh, we have contracts with some of the largest uh, corporates in um, the world. However, the, the important aspect here is about practice. It's, no, it's not just about knowledge, as I said. So it's about practice, and that's where our platform is actually doing very well, which is uh, delivering um, to the 
uh, learner and the participant the ability to practice in a virtual environment uh, without the failure, without the fear of failing and then doing something wrong. So we allow what we call productive failure. We allow people to fail and learn from their failure. So they don't have to do it actually in their job and kill someone in the process, but actually do it in a virtual environment. As a startup, mm -hmm. and what are the kind of building blocks that you put into place? So the the biggest thing when you when you work in a I would say in a knowledge kind of economy is your team, is your team. So the the biggest thing I think that we have set up in our in our organization in our company is the fact that we have a very strong team. In fact, most of our staff have been with us for most of our journey. We are about ten years old now, and most of our staff we're a twenty man team. We're not a very big team. Uh, and most of our people have been with us for almost all of those 10 years. In fact, some of us have been with the company for the 10 years that we are, we've been alive. The, the story here is um, providing motivation for our employees to come back every day, to come back to the workplace every morning. And you know, go. there are ups, there are days that are, that are great, and then there are days which are really miserable. But we have motivation enough to keep coming back every day. And I think that is because the team works well. You, you, you may not be best friends with everybody in the team, but when you work with them, you create this, this energy that drives everybody. And that's the key to our success, I believe, that it's, it's the team that drives us. And it's the fact that uh, every one of us feels that they have a contribution to make to our, uh, you know, growth and to the success that we have as a company. So is that the reason that, I mean, in your company, I found that you know, the only person at this kind of C level is the CFO, but other than that, you're the chief producer and your yeah, co-founder so, is a kind of a creative director. Yeah, so we actually have a very equitable organization. We have almost no hierarchy. And, you know, right from, uh, you know, whether, if I'm a chief producer or my colleague is a chief creative director, we all work I mean, if, if something has to be done, we get on to it. It's not that, you know, oh, I can't do this because I am so-and-so and, you know, you can't do this. It's that if you have to do it, you just get on and do it. And we believe that that hierarchy, non-existence of hierarchy actually drives better results. And I think it works well in, in teams that, that believe in each other and, you know, just get on. As a young company, how do you lay your business roadmap and where do you go from here now? We started off as a pure games for entertainment company. We've become a games for learning. We are, we are now one of the leading serious games company in the region. And uh, we also have, you know, we've done things like, so we are forever looking at the next cutting edge. So, you know, we started working with virtual environments. Now we're working with uh, augmented reality, mixed reality. So. We, we are constantly looking to see how we can improve learning, how we can make the experience for the learner better, how can we make it easier for trainers and educators to access our platform. So um, today we have a, a mobile phone that's you know called the Android or you have an iOS device. Tomorrow you may have something else. But what we are saying is, as a learner or as a trainer, you don't need to worry about technology. You should be worried about the content that you need to deliver or the content that you need to learn because you get your job done better. And therefore, the technology is what we, that we will look at and that drives us. We are constantly looking to see how to make technology easier uh, for people to access. And um, I think as a young company, the the primary, um, I would say, problems or uh, you know, pitfalls are that we may not attract the, the smartest guy in the, in the bunch. But sometimes getting the smartest person in the bunch is not necessarily great for our team. You know, the team works as a as a whole. So, what we are trying to do is to get people who come in into the team and create something that's bigger than the team itself. And that's what we are always looking to do. What are the challenges, you know, some of your initial startup challenges that you faced? Um, so money is always a challenge. Uh, getting customers to believe in our vision is a challenge. So we are constantly evangelizing, constantly standing up and talking about our product, talking about our idea, talking about how it makes your life easier. Um, so all of those and I think uh, 
what we have been blessed with is a group of uh, angel investors who have believed in our vision, who have believed in our capability of doing things, getting it right, and have supported us through the many pivots that we have made in order to get to the next stage. And um, that has been huge. And I think uh, we have been extremely fortunate. Um, I mean, if the group of angel investors who have been with us since we started weren't with us today, we wouldn't be where we are. So it's been, it's a, it's been a tough journey, but I think a very rewarding journey. So we've enjoyed it. And I think it's, there's a long way to go yet. Yeah, I mean, you previously, I mean, before doing the startup, I mean, you come from a I come from a yes, right. I come from a technology yeah. in a corporate environment, and I I have completely enjoyed the freedom and the luxury of shaping our destiny, of what shaping our vision, and which you can't do in a corporate, which has extremely uh, important uh, <coughs> structures and uh, a, a very I would say straight jacketed way of doing things. Um, a startup has that much more flexibility, but it's got that much less resources. So it challenges you in ways of trying to get things done within, within limited budgets, limited time, um, limited presence, limited, uh, you know, limited everything, I would think. But, what, uh, but the freedom, the sense of freedom, and the ability to do things your own way is unprecedented. So it's, it's been a very rewarding place. Uh, according to you, you know, what would be the ideal winning ways for a startup? I would think the most important thing is to have people in your team who think in, in a larger space in the same direction, but are never afraid to contradict the process of getting to that place. So um, it's very important to let every one member in your team have their own ideas and uh, be open enough to debate those ideas through. And that's been, I think, one of the biggest, uh, you know, supports that we've had, that every member of our team has been very, very, uh, I would say, invested in our vision, but not afraid of, you know, taking an, a polar opposite view of how we achieve that vision. So. Um, that's very important from a, for, a, for any organization that's getting started and wants to reach a particular goal. I think it's very important to have people who believe in that, in that dream, in that vision, but are also coming from different backgrounds. They bring different uh, uh, strengths to bear and have the courage to speak. So that's, and I think at the end of the day, it's always a team. It's always the team that makes for a winning uh, proposition. You cannot do it by yourself. Not no one person can reach the top of a mountain by himself or herself. And uh, if you were to kind of crystal ball gaze, what are the kind of technologies or environments that are out there which really excite you at this point of time? I think the new um, augmented reality, mixed reality technologies have are going to take the world by storm. Um, Facebook is putting a lot of money behind Oculus. Uh, while the concept of the Oculus is great, um, it does provide a certain, you know, panache to this concept of learning in a virtual environment. Um, it also has a lot of physical uh, problems with getting, uh, you know, using it because if you can fall, you can be sick, you can have vertigo. So it's very important to uh, look at technologies, competing technologies that take away the physical uh, you know, uh, problems with the Oculus. So we are, uh, I mean, I'm not at liberty to talk about it, but we are talking to a, another very large, uh, one of the world's leaders in technology. They have come up with this new uh, product, and we are probably one of the only people who are going to work with them on, on this product in this region. So I'm not at liberty to talk about it, but I think the augmented mixed reality field is going to be uh, completely game changer for the new world beyond mobile phones and beyond the internet. I mean, those two have completely changed the way we work and we live. And I think um, having augmented reality and mixed reality is going to take that one step forward. So it'll be a completely new environment. Totally new learning, environment. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. And I think it's going to be, um, and it's going to be 
uh, have to be adopted by most institutions of higher learning of uh, you know if, in any if you are in uh, serious in the education space you're going to have to take on that because at the end of the day as i as i was saying it's not about knowledge it's about how i get to what i want to do and that's going to be have to take on uh, the ability to do stuff in the virtual environment or in a in a mixed environment where I do stuff in the physical world but it's actually being reflected in a virtual world with where I can actually do something without uh, having debilitating effects in the physical world. Great. Thank you very much. So I guess it's all about application of knowledge and really Absolutely. not acquisition of knowledge. Alone. Yes. Alone. Acquisition of knowledge is important as long as I'm able to apply it to what I want to do. Yes. Thank Great. you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Vishwesh.